Well guys, I've got water to the right of me. Water to the left of me. And here I am, stuck in the middle with you. The gates are just blown shut. We're heading into the allotments now. Um, like I say, the flooding here, it's absolutely crazy. <laughs> Hi guys, well, as you saw when we come on, the flooding, it's absolutely terrible on the allotments. Gonna need a boat if it keeps it up. We've had rain all week. We've had these 60, 70 mile an hour gusts of wind. We've had snow, hail, stone. We've had everything. We've had brilliant sunshine. I mean, we've had four seasons this morning on the allotment. We've had, uh, we woke up to rain and wind straight after it. Then we woke, then we, we got to the car, we got hail, stone. Before we got to, got to the, the actual gates, um, that had all stopped, then the sun started to come out. Two minutes after that, we had snow, and it's just been a mishmash all, all, all day. So you're gonna get, the optics on the camera's gonna probably go mental in here, cause you got, the light keeps changing, it gets bright and it gets dark, and it's not the optics on the, the camera, it's the outside, the, the sunshine breaking through the clouds, here it goes again, it's absolutely blinding. <laughs> but um, it'll probably be snowing again in a bit, yeah, four seasons in a day. But we've managed to get a lot done this week on my plot. And, um, well, we had a lot of faffing about early on in the week um, with the with the dahlias. Now, I needed to move the dahlias out of the back bed where all the potatoes were. Um, I needed to sift through all the potato buckets, just put all that potato, the compost, into the bed where the potato buckets were. But to get to them, I had to move the dahlias. So I moved the dahlias into the next bed then I sifted through all the potatoes. I'm not going to bore you to death with showing you all these bits, but yeah, there's going to be a few clips uh, showing you what we've been doing. So I sifted through them all, and then I covered them up. Uh, I got the spade out, and I just started to dig down at the back where the, the, the bed what had the spuds in. And as I dug down, it's like, uh, you know when you get a bag of compost and you open it, and it expands. Well, as soon as I dug down and flipped it, it expanded, so uh, it filled, basically filled the bed up. Um, the weight of the buckets had pressed it, uh, had pressed it down that much. And as soon as I dug it, it all come back up, so I didn't know, need no compost in that bed. So my attention's looked to the bed at the side of it, which had all the brassicas, which I was going to give to the chickens anyway. So what I decided to do, for the second time, move the dailies into the next bed, which that was already done, so we didn't have to move them from that point on. But um, you're going to see me um, tilling the bed, getting it all tidy. You're going to see a few weeds as well. We saved some weeds for you to show you um, the best way to remove weeds from a plot. Okay, it took me months to grow these weeds, so I hope you, I hope you, um, you appreciate me saving these weeds to show, <laughs> to show you. Uh, but anyway, we're going to obviously clear all the weeds out of it and uh, then we're going to spread all the buckets of um, compost into it we tamp it down and would you believe it as soon as I, that last um, tamping down it started to rain didn't it and it settled it all down so that's what I want to show you what we've been doing now oh and we actually got the spade and we dug the other bed over as well I'll show you me doing that bit of that as well so underneath that sheet there is a load of um dahlias in buckets we left them in the buckets over winter and we've covered them over and um, hopefully they'll come they'll come good later on this year however i need to get to that pile behind in the, uh, in the blue with the blue tarp over them i need to empty them buckets out so um i need to get these out of the way and then i can start sorting this bed out Someone, when we was moving the shed, put a foot and crushed the bloody board there. So I don't know how I'm going to repair that um, in the next... I'm, I might have to leave it for the time being because uh, I'm going to get some more scaffolding boards and um, we're going to be replacing some of these uh, some of these boards here. But yeah, these today, I'm going to try and move them and move them to here and then cover them back over. But you can clearly see all the water that we've had there. It's, it's absolutely been crazy. Um, the, the, the rain, um, two days of constant rain, so yeah, I have to be careful as well when I'm tipping them out, tipping the water out. So there we go, the, uh, the dahlias have all uh, been covered back up again. 
and it's still too way too early for them to to, to to come up as soon as they come up the frosted at them so we'll keep them covered for another four weeks and we'll take the tarp off but uh, I've got a lot of other things to do in the meantime and uh, well one of them will be to sort the uh, the brassicas out at the back of the back of them I'll be taking the nets off and everything and giving the the, the the cabbages, well, maybe one or two I take home, but most of them will go straight to the chickens. So that, that's one job done for today. Well, guys, we've been going through all the um, potato buckets, checking for there's any small potatoes in, and we've done them all. We've sifted through the whole lot, and we've got all the tiny potatoes out. So this soil, what's in these buckets, we're going to be putting into this bed. I was going to tip them into this bed here, but we started digging, I got my shovel out, and we dug down here, and as I dug down, it's just fluffed up, so it can't take any more compost in this bed, unfortunately. So, but this bed here, this can, so that's where it's all going. So tomorrow morning, well, you're going to see straight after this, we're going to be lifting all these, um, I remove all the, the nets and get rid of these, um, brassicas I give them to the chickens the communal chickens and my chickens uh, we may have to move these dahlias again I didn't bank on moving them but we might have to move them into that bed so we can complete, complete this bed up so that's that's the plan so um, you're gonna see in, in a moment or two uh, the nets coming off there and that will all be cleared up and then we start tipping the compost in then hopefully that's the plan right guys Here's a little tip. Why you should always do your weeding after it's rained. You watching? There you go. Roots and all. There you go. All the roots. See how easy they're coming out. It's a look. Over there. Sorry about the shaky camera work. We'll come down here. So like again, once again, this is how easy it is to get the roots out. Oh, I got, I got it. You go all the roots. That's why you should always do your weeding after a rainstorm. It frees up the ground and it makes it a lot easier to get all the roots out. So there you go. There's a little tip for the day. Well, we've just um, gone through this bed with the oil and uh, as you can see it's it's lovely and it's got a nice tilth on it we didn't <clears throat> we didn't need to put the rotavator through it or the uh, tiller um, we took the weeds out as you just saw uh, what we're going to do though is uh, we've got to move them them dahlias over here into this bed i wish i'd uh, thought of this yesterday when i was when i moved them from over here but all them potato buckets now well, quite a lot of them are actually going to go into this bed here to, to fill it up to the boards like this one is. And then um, that's another bed all done. We've all got to work on is this bed here. And uh, I've already made a start on this here at this side. We started to dig it over yesterday. Uh, and as we started to dig it, what happened was um, it was that compacted down. As soon as we put the shovel in it, it's um, filled the bed right up. So I don't really need to put this... Um, this spent compost, what's in these buckets inside here, into this bed, so I'm going to put them into this one. So anyway, I'm going to move them dahlias for the second time in uh, two days, from underneath that tarp to that bed over there. So here we go again.
Well, in hindsight, guys, I could have done that yesterday and saved me a job. Just got to put the hole through that bit there, and we can uh, start thinking about putting some of the uh, compost, uh, potato compost, on top of the bed. So, and um, that's what I'm going to do now. So, be right back. So I think we've got uh, got enough there. I'm just going to spread it about and see what we've got. We need to top it more in there, or we'll do. But uh, get all that spent compost. If I get it done now, if it rains later, it'll fix it to the the rest of the soil. And before I put anything in it, I always give it a a good tilling. May even put my rotavator through it, but uh, yeah, we're just spreading that, getting rid of all that old compost from the potatoes from last year. What I'm doing here guys, I'm tamping the, the compost down just to stop it from blowing away. It is very fine and it is windy today, so that's what I'm doing. And this is what tamping is. So we've uh, tamped all this down, so this soil ain't going to blow away, and it's all good to go. I could cover it over um, just to protect it until I'm going to use it, but I can't see the point. I want the I want the air and the rain to get to this bed now and soak all this compost, and uh, it won't be long before we we'll, we'll be sowing in the planting, I should say, in, into this bed. But uh, that's another one of these beds done and dusted. So there's only one bed left to do and a load of buckets to clean and uh, well there they all are there. So we've got a few buckets left of compost, I can use that elsewhere. Um, all these buckets though, uh, they all need washing. We've got a pile of them here to be washed. So we'll, we'll have that very shortly. Well guys, 
Um, the only bed I haven't turned over, done anything with, is this one here. That had the potatoes in it. Now in that up there where the blue tarp is, I've already dug that over. Um, in them buckets are some compost. But what I want to do is uh, dig this over now. I know it's very claggy, it's been raining non-stop for the last three days, but hopefully it should be dry enough. Uh, we're going to get a bit of a frost over the next few days. Well, that's what I'm hoping, and uh, it'll break it all down into a fine tilth. Now, if I just hit it with a shovel, it should break up anyway, but what I want to do is turn it over and fluff the bed up. So that's what we're going to do. Got my shovel there, so we're going to have at it. Shouldn't take long.
so um, we've dug it over um, we'll hit that with a tiller in the in the week I'm surprised it's, it's still a bit claggy but then again it's been raining for four days non-stop however it's uh, with it being so high up uh, it's, the soil's drained really well so um, yeah we'll come back to this and uh, finish it off get it ready um, probably I'll give it I'll give it a couple of weeks because we, there is frost on the way so yeah, I just break it up a little bit more and uh, so I'm going to leave that now for the uh, the little robins to dig through it and get all the worms and creepy crawlies. Well guys what's more important than digging that bed over is cleaning your shovel at the end of it. This, this shovel here is absolute fantastic um, you can't buy it in shops all I, can all I can suggest you do looking for a shovel a spade end like this and fitting a, and a longer pole to it but um, yeah it certainly makes short work of, uh, of this bed, these beds here so that's another job all done and dusted most important though clean your shovels clean your tools guys when you're finished right Let's go and have a nice cup of coffee. See you in the next one. So, two more beds all done and dusted. So that's it, the beds are all ready, ready to go. Um, we can just put cabbages and collies in and everything. Speaking of cabbages and collies, uh, Remember them trays that I did? I sprinkled a load of seeds in. Uh, I'll tell you now, I'm, I'm probably going to have to do this uh, clip again here because this sun is so bright and it's blinding me. And I'm looking, I can actually see myself talking, and it looks very bright. Um, so, if it is, I'm sorry. It's just that the sun's right behind, in front, behind me here, shining onto the camera. But um, I'm going to take you up to the the middle greenhouse now. I'll show you. Remember them them trays what we sprinkle with the cabbages and the collies and the kale well, let's go and have a look at them I think it was about 10 days ago I saw it's, these um, you remember me sowing these um, seeds about about 10 days ago maybe 12 days ago um, let's have a look in here and see how they're doing now these are the collies and cabbage I think hang on which ones are these uh, oh these are collies here what's well, just coming up now and we've got the cone cabbage there what we'll be doing is pricking these out and putting them into bigger pots shortly um, and let's have a look in this one here for some reason these are doing a bit better these are the um, kale and the the savoy cabbage like I say we're going to prick some out we're going to put them on probably about 20 I'll take these obviously I need these things here so I'm going to have to ask people if they want some they can go and get some and they can put them on themselves um, although we might just do a load of them and give them away like we normally do but uh, yeah, what, um, what I will do is give them a quick water uh, a little bit of water in there just to um, help them out we'll be doing this early well, middle of next week I would imagine putting them into, into some small pots I've got a lot of um, drinking cups what we use over and over again so that's what I'll be doing pricking these out and uh, don't they look well? Let's hope they keep looking well as well. <laughs> so, we're going to be pricking them out very shortly. Uh, we've, we've got some of these little white coffee cups. You see, I've got thousands of them. I never throw them away. I always save them. And I'm going to be using them um, to to put the cabbages in. So what I do is, if they get too leggy, you can actually plant cabbage right down to the first set of leads. And the collies, all brassicas, you can plant deeply. So. You know they get leggy don't worry about it as long as you've got the, the pots deep enough you can plant them deeper so uh, you know there's a little tip for you so we're going to be doing that probably next episode because we've got so much to we've been doing so much this week even though we've had hail rain and snow every day and flooding we still managed to do quite a lot of things in fact um, we had these three little puppies here now that are, um, that are currants and red currants but they're not conventionally um, they've been grafted onto some tree stock 
Now I've got some gooseberries, the same thing sort of thing, and uh, well, they was in the greenhouse, they've been in that middle greenhouse for oh, about two and a half months and I looked at them and they was actually starting to bud. So I thought we're going to have to get these planted. Anyway, we got a break in the weather a couple of days ago. So you're going to see me now using some mycorrhizal fungi and a lot of faffing about with this plastic. There must have been three metres of bloody plastic on this thing. But you're going to see a couple of little clips of me doing all this. And also you're going to see... Um, you're going to see my neighbour's plot because it, it's absolutely hammering with rain um, not, not an hour before but you can see the difference between my plot and her plot um, with the rain and the only reason why my plot is well you're going to see in the video so here it comes well guys I've got a couple of red currant but uh, um, well, for the, basically the, a bush grafted onto some tree stock and we've got three of them here they've been in the greenhouse uh, my middle greenhouse for oh god um, about two months and they're starting to, well that one there is starting to get um, some flower, um, leaves on it and the other two are just starting so what I'm going to do um, I'm going to put one in each corner and one in the middle so I've got three of them in this bed which is next to where the, uh, the shed is here so what we'll be able to do is we're walking past we'll be able to take uh, some currants off and stuff in the face now it's quite windy today it's been a vicious winds all week here as it's been everywhere else but we've got this mycorrhizal fungi which i'm going to be putting into the holes and around the roots as well just to give them that little bit more of a kick and get them started so uh, i've actually used this um drill here to, to, to do the hole so it's just a matter of uh, taking the plastic off and not getting blown away in the um, in the melee with this wind because it's absolute vicious so uh, I'm going to have at it now and I'll show you what we're going to be doing um, the ground is sodden by the way it's not stopped raining for the last few days it's been uh, one of them so the ground's sodden but we will be putting water in there as well so let's uh, get the camera set up properly and uh, show me just basically setting them into the into, into the actual beds. So when you get these, they always come wrapped in this uh, plastic here, which is an absolute nightmare to get off. You take basically all the bloody um, the soil which is covering the plant with it when you actually remove it so what I'm going to do is quickly remove this and then we can get it planted sooner the better really because it looks like it's going to rain must be about three meters of this plastic on here And then right at the very end, you get it all coming off here. Look at this, absolute ridiculous. Hopefully they should be able to slide that off there. There we go. Look at the roots there, beautiful. So what I'm gonna do, just lay it down for the moment. And, uh, this mycorrhizal in the hole and then I'm going to rub it on the roots that's good enough, nice and firm We go that's the first one so we're going to repeat that um, along this bed and uh, then we're done
perfect. Now the some mycorrhizal fungi down the walls of the hole. This is the dodgy bit, getting this plastic off here. Absolutely horrible. So give me a moment to figure out how to get it off and then we'll, we'll get it planted. Got it round the roots and everything. Oh, that's nice. Look at, the, look at the roots on that. And full of mycorrhizal all the way around it. Perfect. Now the ground is lovely and damp and wet, but we're still going to give it a good soaking. There we go, let that soak in. And then we've got this uh, three red currant um, trees some bushes so planted. Are, We've got them both all planted in now. We took the labels off them as well because what happens is when the labels are blowing in the wind, they'll, what they'll cut the air, uh, the bark and kill the plant. So we removed them and we've got one here, one in the middle and one up the other end. Uh, we'll be putting strawberries and other fruits in this one here. Um, again, we do like uh, currants. We, these are all red currants. Over there you've got red and white currants. Over there you've got red, white and black currants, black currants, black currants, black currants. So we certainly like us black currants and red currants. Gooseberries, a couple of them, the same sort of thing, these trees here. But we've got them in gooseberry form over there. We've got gooseberries here, gooseberries there, they're all starting to bud as well. Um, so everything's looking pretty good. <laughs> and, then, and then you've got the, you've got all the daffodils. Um, Tulips coming up in the borders, the sedum's starting to grow now, look at the sedum how it's starting to pick up. Uh, a few poppies there starting to pop out, cup up, pop up I should say, get it out. Um, rhubarb's doing wonderfully over there. Um, you can see all the buds on these, even the roses are starting to pick up now. This fig's starting to come back to life. Then you've got the rosemary on, on the corners all the way around. It's uh, it's doing quite well on the front part of the plot. The wind's been really bad though, you can see some of the daffodils have been blown over. But uh, what we needed to do was to do these today. You notice there's no flooding on my plot. Well, if you look down there, it's a foot, it drops away down there. This is how high the plot is. Now if you look on my neighbour's plot, let's swing around. Unfortunately, um, hers ain't like mine. You see the path level there? Now look at the water here. It's absolute terrible. So, anyway, that's basically um, the reason why I lifted my, my plot up. But as you can see, we've got no water or anything like that. No flooding. And, uh, well, the good thing is we've got these, um, these Currants, red currants are uh, planted. So, as you saw there, uh, um, my neighbour's plot's terrible, but it's because it needs it, well, it needs more compost and it's soil in it really, and some arse when you're. Um, now, my my um, it does help when you when you build your beds up and a foot higher than what the allotments is, and the the paths work for me. Um, the water drains off me my plot into the, the drains as I was showing you so I don't have so much uh, I don't have um, any problems really uh, with the flooding like I used to remember the flooding oh god the flooding I used to have it was terrible you could put a pond into some of the beds years ago but all that's all gone now that was a thing of the past but it took a lot of hard work to make to, to get it so it drains like that 
and you know you're adding grit and all sorts of stuff to the soil um, you don't you know um, anyway what else we've been doing oh banky panky been going on in this greenhouse guys honestly bit of anky panky let me show you well guys the frogs are spawn anywhere and there we are inside my greenhouse I put one of these trays what you put underneath your your planters of these the 12 inch trays by the way I put a bit of water well filled it with water because I know the frogs spawn in here every year and uh, as you can see there's a frog in the water feature that I've put in there and there's a load of spawn um, later on in the week I'll put that spawn in the pond outside it's got a better chance outside in here the temperatures uh, are, are probably dry it out so um, I could actually leave it in the in here and just top it up with water but I will be putting my uh, potato buckets in here very shortly so it's gonna have to move but again if we didn't have the pond thing, the little feature in the greenhouse, the, the, the frogs would have just put the spawn on a damp patch and that would have been it. So we've actually saved it. And uh, as you can see, there's a frog at the bottom of the picture. Absolutely wonderful. Now we put that tray in there last week and the frogs have spawned into it, haven't they? So we, we left them there for today and tomorrow. What we'll do, we'll put that spawn into the pond outside later on in the week. I could leave it there and just top it up, but the thing is, if you leave it there, and the frogs um, all all grow to you know mini frogs, there won't be enough food in this greenhouse for them to compete. There's about three or four frogs in this greenhouse which live in the greenhouse through the year. They never leave the greenhouse. How the hell they get in, I never know. I, I can only surmise they they dug down outside here and come under the the boards. It's the only place that the frog could possibly get into the greenhouse because there's paving stones all the way around except for the front part of the plot where the road is so that's how I think they've got in they've come in they've never come through the door because the door's always shut but they're in here and there's about four or five of them so to keep that equilibrium of um, you know the, so they've got enough food to feed themselves I can't leave the spawn in here so that will have, that will go in the pond outside in fact we were scooping more spawn up here yesterday and was putting it in um, it, what had happened was uh, the frogs had spawned again on my brother's uh, plot on them black sheets and um, my friend Debbie she's got a pond a bit further up now she's got nothing in it so what we did we seeded it with a load of this frog spawn for her she doesn't know yet but she'd be really happy when she finds out in fact let me show you um, where we put it well guys we're coming back down onto my brother's plot uh we've not been out of doing that look at the water here it's hammering it down the only thing what seems to be having a good time these days are the frogs and uh yeah they've spawned again in here so uh, let's just whoops hang on let's get this between me between my legs and oh, this little bit fell out there Try and save as much as we can. There we go. Yep, frogs will be frogs. I can't see any more. Uh, yeah, they, they are persistent. What a spawn there. Just check over the other side over there. Got to be careful there. See they spawned on this one. Sheets are blown all over here. You see underneath the sheets here how it's uh it's all there's no weeds or anything. Just push this back. Stop the weeds from coming back until we get the rotavator through it. I just put my foot in a bloody puddle there, my feet's absolutely soaking now. Oh the joy. But uh yeah, that's uh, some frog spawn we just saved. So now then, what we need to do is dodge all this. Look at this flood in here, guys. Oh, good God, my feet are wet through now. Bloody hell. That path, just look at it. Look at the flood in here around these bees. 
absolutely horrendous. Now then, there's a couple of ponds up here. There's one just over there. My Debbie, Debbie uh, friend of mine, she's got a pond just up here. But uh, I don't think there's any water in it. I was just going to check anyway. If there is, I'll put the frogs in it. Oh, here we are. She has got a pond and it's full of water. So what we're going to do... There we go. And then it's gone. If it'll come back to the top that I'm sure. <laughs> but there's a uh, there's frog spawn in a pond now. So a pond's been seeded. There's a bit of flooding on her plot as well, as I noticed there, but it, it's it's not stopped raining, it's been terrible. And uh, it, we've, we've been um, confined to the, the greenhouses, really. Um, I decided I'd had enough, and I thought, we're going to go on a spending trip. What I was looking for, I went up to a couple of garden centres, I was looking for one of these big, long, big, big wide rakes, uh, about two, two foot, I can't get them anywhere. I want a really big rake, you know, wide. The old Victorian ones are the perfect sort of rakes, but I can't, I've looked everywhere for them, car boots, you name it struggling to find one but uh, we went to a couple of car, uh, uh, garden centres and I come back with a load of uh, would you believe it chilies and um, heritage tomatoes um, not like me so what I'm going to do now I'm going to take you up to the, well down to the middle greenhouse and show you some of these things what we've been buying well um, this is what we've been wasting his money on guys we got these uh, heritage tomatoes we've got some black russian some beef master f1s uh, some Tiger Ella, um, some Brandywine and some uh, Cherokee. These are Heritage, they're F1s and this Black Russian, I'm not too sure what that one is, but uh, a pound a pot. I'm not going to um, say no to them. I'm never, never, I'd be interested to see what they taste like and uh, you know, they're not bad little, little tomatoes so um, yeah well, that's what we've been wasting his money on. Uh, we've actually bought these from B&Q as well. Uh, got Shakira. That's a got Shakira. What's that one? Alapino. Uh, hot something or other. Hot dragon. So, I mean, again, these ones are a, 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 a pound a pot as well. So I bought them. And I got these ones as well. Um, these are Sweet Banana, Yellow Bell F1, and Bell Boy. And again, look at them. I couldn't, I could not say no. They look absolutely fantastic. I'll be putting these on shortly. So that's what I wasted my money on yesterday when it was raining. So yeah, there was a uh, six chilies there uh, for six pound, pound a pot. Couldn't resist that. That was in B and Q. Uh, we actually bought three of them more raspberries, uh, but they're going in buckets. Them, um, we we love smoothies. You know what I mean? You can have gooseberries, raspberries, currants, uh, the old nine yards. The the girls mix them all together now. <laughs> but um, it's the only time you get them on the plot um, the, with the um, blueberries and what have you. They come in when they come to pick them, and um, yeah, more the merrier. And um, yeah, the the heritage tomatoes. How awesome are they? Pound up uh, again, a pound each. You can't, you can't knock it really. And I thought well, we'll get them. I've never done them, but never bought them like that before. I've always grown them. I've actually got hundreds of chilies started already, starting to come up. Um, and tomatoes. I need to get um, Nigel's tomatoes started as well. Um, I, I'm going to leave that a little bit later. Um, I, I don't want to do it too soon. Um, I, you only got eight seeds or something like that in the pot, and I don't want to, I don't want to plant them out and then they fail. That'd be that'd be a killer, won't it? But uh, yeah, that's what we've been doing this week. We've uh, we've been spending some money, been having a bit of fun outside. The helicopter there, unbelievable. Wait while it goes over. 
anyway that was yesterday what we were in the garden centre so today um, like I said it's Sunday I think it's the 17th today let me just quit share yep 17th of March I don't know if you can see that so I'll be trying to get this video up later on tonight um, if I can I will um, I think we should be able to do it I've got most of the video all edited it's just like I'm, what I'm doing now I put all the parts in between the the, the waffling so you get this this get the full video that's how I, I managed to do it I could put I could have made three videos rather than just the one video I will start making uh, smaller videos shortly as the season starts to pick up um, I'll, I'll have more you know be putting smaller clip videos out it's just that you know it's uh, there's not much you can do. You can't do three videos uh, a week in winter, so it's best to just do one big one. But we will be making smaller videos as uh, as as the season kicks into gear. So that's it really for this one. I just want to thank everybody for uh, subscribing to the channel. You're absolutely awesome. Um, I think uh, about our uh, last time looks about four thousand thereabouts. 4,000 maybe 200 I don't know I need to look really but uh, again thanks everybody uh, for for subscribing <laughs> I really need to keep an eye on me, 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 uh, me subscribe account probably less by after we finish this waffling but um, I've talked anyway. long and hard and long enough thanks for watching guys see you real soon goodbye for now